Today's vlog is called the, the way of the garden and that is because there were two things that happened in the garden today which, um, which led me down this path of uh, talking about the way of the garden and let me first tell you what these two things were. Number one, uh, the beech tree that I have uh, towards uh, the entrance of the house, now that had a fungal disease. It's, it still has a fungal disease. And the thing is that um, it had that last year as well. And towards the beginning, or was it was it two years ago? I think it was two years ago. And I, I consulted a, a local gardener. I said, I want something organic and what can be done. And, uh, and basically, you know, fungus also stays in the soil. So unless and until you really um, move the soil out and, and, and treat the tree, the roots, the leaves, the stems, everything. And then you put fresh soil in. This is very hard to get rid of the fungal disease. But he recommended, the gardener recommended something that he said is organic. And I checked the, um, uh, uh, the, the package and read and everything. And it was a, a product that was made up, a plant product and it was supposed to take care of the fungus. So I, I sprayed the tree um, two years ago. And then it also last year, it carried a lot of fruits. It was wonderful was really good and then this year it has been hit really badly really really badly so um, so while today morning when I was looking at it because yesterday I used the same product that I had used two years ago and I sprayed the tree and while I was looking at it today I also saw that it had also been affected or attacked by aphids so loads and loads of very very tiny aphids that were kind of sitting on the on the branch and when I took a piece of tissue because I just thought okay, let me just get rid of it with, with the tissue so I kind of wiped it and it had a very rusty um, brownish fluid and the tree just didn't look happy and still doesn't. It has some fruits so it's carrying some fruits but generally all the leaves are crumpled up and um, and looks really um, sad and and sick and ill. So that was the one thing that happened today, um, which got me thinking on the way of the garden. And I'll come to that in a minute. Let me tell you what the second thing was. The second was when um, I was I was pruning some of the roses, just deadheading actually, not not even pruning, deadheading them, and. Um, and then I found out that the one rose that I have, which is really beautiful, and uh, you have to understand how it is placed. So I have a greenhouse here. So that means this is blocked. This side is blocked. So there is no air circulation from this side. And then I have uh, um, an abri de juda, it's called. So that's a, that's kind of a, a biggish shrub, like a small tree. And then at the side of it, I have this rose. And as an understudy, I have loads of mint and, and lemon balm that has just spread itself. So everything is looks beautiful and great. Only today when I went there and I saw that there were tiny, tiny, tiny little white droppings all over the Abre de Juda. And in fact, it was kind of raining down, which means that there are aphids as well on this tree. So obviously the, the first thought that came to my mind was that, okay, not enough air circulation because obviously there's the greenhouse and there's the tree right next to it. So it can't get, so the air really can't circulate. And any place where the air cannot circulate is a place where pests are going to thrive. That's something that they really like. And now this is where the thought came up because I was thinking about it. I immediately, you know, as a gardener, I'm trying to find solutions. I'm trying to see, okay, how do I get rid of this? How do I eliminate something? And uh, and so my trees can, can survive. And then I remembered, I remembered reading about Gilles Clément, who is one of uh, France's very, very leading landscape designer. And he has revolutionized actually the way um, gardening is by introducing something that's called fluid gardening. Um, and he's, he calls it the garden in movement. That's what he calls it, garden in movement. And uh, so I, I thought of him because his philosophy is, is doing less is actually more. And the way he gardens is uh, 
by keeping any human interference to the absolute minimum. And this literally spreads to all plants, not just the plants that he wants to grow or we think are, are plants that should be cultivated in the gardening garden, but, but everything, including weeds and, and what have you, and bindweed and, and brambles and everything, the, the whole range of it. Because he says, and this is what I remembered, that if, if you do not interfere, if you leave everything in balance, it's all going to work out on its own. And that got me thinking a little bit because I was wondering when I apply that in, in my case, I mean, of course, I, I try to keep my garden as natural as possible, but yet it is actually not possible to keep it natural because a garden is the most unnatural place that you can have. Because nowhere in nature are you going to find plants that we have in the garden positioned right next to each other. It just doesn't exist. We as gardeners, we are designing something, we are creating something that is very, very unnatural. It sounds paradoxical, but, but that's the way it is. So, so if I now want to have a balance restored, let us say, for my ailing plants, first of all, of course, I have to see if, if I really have invited enough wildlife into the garden. So are there enough birds to take care of the aphids, right? That's the first thing. The most logical thing is that there'll be some birds and they are going to eat up the aphids. And this is then, I remembered something that a friend of mine actually said, What this, was that this year they started to, um, they, they again, not started, but they again, because they didn't do that for the last two years, the community, they sprayed the, the rivers and the water canals against mosquitoes. Now, they did not do that the last two years. And the last two years, we had so many birds, such a wide variety of birds, because the birds took care of the mosquitoes, maybe not in a way that the camping site people were happy or that the tourists were happy, because obviously they were not, they were getting bit by mosquitoes. But they kept the population in balance. And this year, when they spread, Perhaps that's already having an effect because perhaps the bird population has decreased because the food is just not there, right? And what I did today by just taking a piece of tissue and, and just wiping the bark is that I also took off the, the food that I could have left for the birds. I'm not so experienced as to know what's going to happen if I just let it go. I think the tree will just die because it's ultimately going to just take off all the um, all the nutrients from the tree and obviously you have the sticky residue that's that's just everywhere so it's it's always f trying to find a balance and uh, rethinking perhaps the way that um, that i'm gardening and i'd like to read something to you that i found um, from from Gilles Clément, well actually it was an interview or a visit that Monty Don did in his garden in, it's called the La Vallée and he says that Gilles Clément sees ecology as a fluid movement. You can resist it, although that's bound for failure or go with it, but you cannot know where it is going. All gardens, Gilles says, in everything other than the shortest term are part of this movement. They will always sort themselves out. And this is, this is just so true. This is absolutely true. A garden is always in movement. Plants are always moving. This is, this is not a finished form of art. This is not a painting that is finished and you can put it on the wall and look at it and it's going to still look the same after 200 years, 300 years, 500 years. It isn't. It's fluid. It's constantly moving. It's constantly moving because the plants are constantly moving. I mean, even within this small space that I have, and I really don't have a very big garden, but going around in, in spring and then I see, you know, okay, the verbena has grown there and it has decided to grow somewhere else. So why not? And this is the idea that I want to explore. Why not let the plants be where they are? Because that's probably where they're the happiest. And I am just going and interfering with some kind of an idea in my head that no, my garden has to look like this. And 
And of course, when I started creating this garden and, and building this garden um, already in my mind four or five years ago, and I knew, I knew how everything was going to look like. But then how can I know? I cannot know because I'm, li I'm literally dealing with living things. They have a mind of their own. There is also something they like and something they don't like. Maybe the rose that I want in one position will not be happy in that place. And, and they show, right? This is exactly what's happened because they're ailing. So something is not right. They should not be there. So I have to allow a couple of things uh, or actually the garden to, 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 take, to take its life, to, to really become alive, come alive, come alive by, by not doing a lot. I mean, of course, every garden needs a gardener. A gardener, as gardeners, our, we are custodians, right? We are just taking care of the space that has been entrusted to us. We're making sure that, uh, that we keep it rich and varied and, and full of wildlife and insects and reptiles and what have you and, and plants and things like that. But keep it in a way that still has the balance such that everything can thrive. And I do have to apply this philosophy. And this is something that, that got me thinking because I was very disturbed by what I saw. And I thought, okay, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time for me to, to rethink how I, how I go about my, my gardening. So that's just a, a thought that I thought I should share with you.